Hey everyone, this is Adi and you're listening to the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. In this episode, we talk to Aditya Sharma, a 21-year-old computer science university student from India. Aditya has now participated twice in Summer of Bitcoin, both times contributing to the Code Lightning project. Last year in 2022, Aditya worked on implementing static channel backups that allows you to recover your Lightning funds in case of severe data loss. Aditya talks about his work on Lightning, why Bitcoin is important to him, and shares his advice for those applying to Summer of Bitcoin. Let's hear it from Aditya. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, hey Aditya, welcome to the Summer of Bitcoin experience. It's good to have you. Hi, Adi. Excellent presentation, by the way. Thank you. All right. So, Aditya, let's start with a bit of your background, you know, maybe introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, I am Aditya Sharma. I am a final year metallurgical engineering graduate from IIT BHU. Uh, my core interest lies in uh, applied cryptography and Bitcoin. Uh, I've been uh, two-time mentees uh, in Summer of Bitcoin, and I've done one winter internship with Blockstream, and currently I am uh, interning at this uh, startup called uh, Silence Laboratories as a security research intern, and I build uh, authentication systems for promoting self-custody of your coins. Yeah. Awesome. So... Let's talk about your Bitcoin journey, right? Like how did you stumble down the Bitcoin rabbit hole? What was your first interaction? Maybe a video or podcast or some blog post you came across or maybe even your own life experience. Uh, you know, what was your orange pill moment? Yeah, so basically just like all of these people in the meeting, I got orange pill through summer of Bitcoin. So while preparing for the application period and the interviews, I... I read the white paper, obviously understood nothing at first. So then I uh, read many articles. I, I listened to many videos of Antonov, who is a, who is a Bitcoin advocate, who's, uh, he's very famous. So yeah, that's how I got into the rabbit hole. And then I started discovering the philosophies, the technology behind it and all of those things. So yeah, summer of Bitcoin was my orange pill moment. So tell us more about you know, what attracted you to Bitcoin? Like, why do you feel Bitcoin is important and worth paying attention to? Yeah, so there can be a plethora of reason why Bitcoin is important. Uh, from a purely technological standpoint, I feel it's an engineering marvel. Like, if you if you read the white paper and you see how effectively and efficiently uh, Satoshi has tried to solve these complex problems like double spending, Byzantine general problem through cryptography, it's it's truly good if, like not just about the money but if you to if you are if you are a geek and you want to know how things work you should read the white paper you should go through it once so that's the technological standpoint and other than this uh, there's one more reason why it is important like there are close to 200 countries on this planet right and only a handful of those are considered to be stable economies uh, economic collapses happens every other day, Sri Lankan economy collapse. So Bitcoin gives a choice to the citizens of this country to opt out of the institutional baggage that comes uh, to, comes on you without your choice. So these are the two reasons on top of my mind that why Bitcoin is important. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, to your first point, um, we had a guest lecture uh, I think it was by Sanket, who was a mentor at Summer of yeah. Bitcoin. And he went into the various components of computer science that are uh, basically involved in the Bitcoin protocol and the network in, in terms of how it runs. And what's fascinating is that it touches each and every single component, uh, subject and topic of computer science, whether it's you know uh, computer architecture, whether it's cryptography, uh, whether it's game theory, um, and you know, networking. Um, so that's sort of the most fascinating uh, aspect of, of the Bitcoin protocol where it has something for every uh, computer science geek uh, out there. Okay. And, and of course, uh, as we all know, uh, Bitcoin offers a choice uh, to opt out of the corrupt fiat system. 
uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why uh, it's worth paying attention to. So tell us about summer of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, when did you, when and how did you hear about it? And like, what was your first impression? Yeah, so basically last year, I got this mail from the programming club that is COPS. Uh, Nishant Bhaiya was the secretary. So he sent out the mail if you're interested in some open source uh, opportunity. And I saw this type when it was $2,500 back then. And yeah, that's how I I knew about Summer of Bitcoin. And I immediately visited the website. I, I had a doubt that this could be something related to the crypto web three or all of those buzzwords. But then I saw the people, I saw Chain Code was uh, providing content for it. And then, yeah, I, I thought it was uh, legit and I should apply. Yeah. Cool. Um, so tell us about like, why did you apply? What made you apply? And maybe even a bit about the application process. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's an interesting story, actually. So I was preparing for GSOC initially. For, like since my first year, I, I always wanted to go in GSOC. But then... Uh, the GSOC that I was preparing for also was the season that on-campus companies came and internship season happened. So I dropped the plan and I thought I'll do it later. And some of my close friends uh, got into GSOC and I was like, what the hell did I just do? Uh, I could have gotten as well. And then uh, after one or two days of it, I got this mail of summer of Bitcoin and I was like, I won't let this opportunity go. And then I applied for it. And that's the main reason why I applied, actually. It seemed cool. Uh, it's open source as well. Yeah. So. Cool. So um, talk to us about the application process. Like, what did you went through and, um, you know, which org did you end up choosing? So I guess we have, like, you participated last year in 2021. And you also yeah. participated this year in 2022. Like, tell us about you know, both those experiences. Yeah, so uh, in the first year, the application process was bifurcated in uh, three uh, three steps. The first one was you guys gave us a problem like we had to choose the most profitable tree of uh, transactions from the mempool. Uh, it's a computer science problem, which is called constrained knapsack uh, problem. And it's an optimization one. And uh, we had a deadline for four to five days to solve it. So I was on it for, yeah, for, yeah, for four days and I submitted it. And then the second round was, uh, we had to choose an issue from the Bitcoin core repository and, uh, submit a proposal and essay, uh, of how, what's the way to solve this and how should we go about it? And the third one was, uh, the most fun, uh, the on-call interviews with, yeah, Adam and Carly. So this was the application process uh, this year. Yeah, I got the offer because of my performance in the first cohort. So uh, fortunately, I didn't have to sit through the rigorous process of, <laughs> uh, yeah. of getting through. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing, right? So um, those interns who already participate in have already participated in summer of Bitcoin, uh, we love to have them back. And so. Uh, you know, with every subsequent iteration, if they are still in university, uh, we always invite them back uh, and they are free to choose any project that they want to work on uh, without, again, going through the screening process. So uh, tell us about the organization you chose to work with and, and why. Yeah, so while going through the lectures that were provided along the, like, throughout the program, I was... I was also actively looking for the recent developments in the ecosystem and lightning was the thing that was happening and it's new. Uh, it's been around from 2016 or 17. So, uh, and the first implementation of it is the cold lightning. So there was, uh, yeah, I was obvi obviously fascinated by lightning. So that's why I chose lightning and the people were like really great. Rusty, Lisa uh, and Christian Decker are the marvels of this this thing. So I chose Code Lightning. That's why. Honestly speaking, I would not have chosen this organization uh, if uh, this would be given a choice before selection, because it's a tough one. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's tough to understand the Code Lightning. The protocol is, is still in development and the documentation is not that uh, uh, elaborate. So yeah, that's how I got into Code Lightning. Let's take a quick break and hear about today's sponsor. Hey everyone, this is Adi. When I was starting in the Bitcoin industry a few years ago, 
there were hardly any resources to learn from. It was especially hard to find other like-minded Bitcoin developers and discuss about building apps on the Bitcoin blockchain. Well, things have changed and I'm so excited to share with you about the Build on L2 initiative. Build on L2 is a community-led effort by contributors and companies building on Core Lightning and the Liquid Network. It's a space to connect with Bitcoin builders, product managers, designers, and developers through events and mentorship programs and learn from experts building the future of Bitcoin. It's exactly what I wish I had when I was starting out in Bitcoin. Go to buildonl2.com to join the community and learn how to build killer apps on Bitcoin. Back to the show. So, you know, for folks on the call, if for those who don't know what Lightning is, uh, could you maybe give a brief overview or description of the Lightning Network? Yeah, so one of the, uh, one of the problem uh, like uh, with Bitcoin is uh, each transaction takes an average of 10 minutes, which is not really a problem when you will read about the things. So Lightning basically solved the, solves this by uh, doing the transaction on the layer two. Uh, so it's a P2P network, which makes uh, contracts of transaction and it's instant. Uh, it's faster than Visa. Uh, yeah, that's what Lightning is in a layman terms. It scales yep. Bitcoin. Absolutely. And to add to that, um, so the Bitcoin base layer, uh, where you know, Aditya mentioned about uh, you know, how it takes uh, roughly 10 minutes uh, for a transaction, to get confirmed and then of course uh maybe it'll take longer maybe it'll take shorter uh but on average you know there are blocks in the bitcoin blockchain that get added every 10 minutes and you want to get your transaction into confirmed in a certain block so the base layer acts as a settlement layer uh whereas the lightning network offers peer-to-peer -peer, uh instant transaction uh peer-to-peer -peer instant payments between two people and, and this transaction uh, happens as a smart contract uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain, which allows for instantaneous payments. And, you know, these could also be micro payments, um, you know, a few cents um, and it gets settled instantly um, as compared to what happens on the base layer. So, um, okay. So, you know, maybe do you want to elaborate a bit on the specific project you worked on uh, with Core Lightning? Yeah, so uh, the Lightning protocol is right now developing as well. Like it's a it's a very active ecosystem. So uh, right now the problem with Lightning is the invoices. Like they are not static. So if someone wants to pay me, I'll have to create a unique invoice for each payment, which is a problem, which is uh, called the Bolt 11. Bolt are the Bolt is basically the constitution of Lightning. It's the protocol specification which it follows. So uh, my mentor, uh, Rusty, uh, proposed a solution to this, which is called the Bolt 12. So I implemented it in JavaScript, which was the first project that I did uh, uh, in my last summer of Bitcoin. Uh, in this project, I got down to the protocol level and I implemented static channel backups. Uh, so basically, uh, static channel backups is a uh, lightning database is dynamic. And if you lose your data, there's a risk of losing your funds. So what is static channel backups does is it creates a file and the file automatically gets updated with some static information. And in case of complete data loss, you can recover your funds if you have that file with you. So that's static channel backups and bold 12 uh, basically solved the static invoices thing. So uh, now every merchant can have a static QR code uh, for his Lightning node, and users can just scan the code and pay. Yeah. So tell us more about Rusty, you know, your project mentor, and how was your experience working with him? Yeah, like he's a legend. He has helped me with a lot. Like every time I get stuck, I ping him, I irritate him, and he he sort of helps me every time he has connected me to Lisa and Christian Decker who works on cold lightning as well. Uh, it's been over an year. I've been working with these guys and uh, I couldn't have asked for more. I've learned a lot. Uh, actually. Yeah. These are the guys who have taught me how things work actually. Yeah. Awesome. 
So um, like moving on beyond summer of Bitcoin, like what are your plans now? And like, are you currently working on any Bitcoin project? Yeah, so I am uh, basically scaling up the static channel backup thanks to PR static backup. Uh, I have put up the PR. It would be uh, integrated hopefully uh, by this release, in this release. Uh, I am also in talks with uh, Connor from Spiral, but I can't disclose much about the details of what we are going to do. Uh, and right now I'm uh, at my current uh, or internship, I'm building key management system for self-custody, uh, which is called social recovery. So it's purely cryptographic. It would be out on my GitHub and yeah, in, cool. in a few weeks, hopefully. Okay. So, you know, for folks who are on the call who've joined us today, and even as a generic advice to uh, developers who are looking to contribute to open source Bitcoin, like what do you think are the best resources for anyone who wants to start contributing to open source Bitcoin? Yeah, so uh, basically I feel uh, contributing to Bitcoin, you, you should obviously gather some prerequisite knowledge, uh, which comes from the white paper. You can go through a book called Grokking Bitcoin, which is uh, like the simplest explanation of th how things work in Bitcoin I have seen is mentioned in the book Grokking Bitcoin. There's another book called Mastering Bitcoin by Antonov. These two books and the white paper, if you know these things, you are good to go. Then you should decide at what level uh, you want to work. Do you want to work at the protocol level? Do you want to do front end stuff? Do you want to create APIs and all of those things? So you should choose a project, uh, go on uh, Summer of Bitcoin's website, choose a organization, choose a project and start contributing. That's it. Like. That's yeah. the way to go. Awesome. Yeah. We'll definitely mention those books and you know references in the notes. Um, any generic uh, or special, any, any tips for, uh, you know, uh, folks to crack summer of Bitcoin? Yeah, sure. So I feel uh, you should have uh, three skills for successfully cracking summer of Bitcoin. Uh, the first and the foremost is the data structure and algorithm. You should be well versed with DSA in at least one language. You should be able to solve medium questions on lead code. If you're at that stage, then you will comfortably pass the first round, hopefully. Uh, then you should obviously have the knowledge of Git and GitHub. That's very important, but people neglect this. It's very important to know what's cherry picking, what's rebasing, what interactive rebases. So you should gather uh, knowledge regarding Git, GitHub. It will make your life easier, trust me. Uh, and the third one is you should have a basic idea of what Bitcoin is, what it stands for, uh, what is a blockchain, uh, what is double spending problem? What is proof of work? All of this you can get in the books I have mentioned, like grokking Bitcoin, mastering Bitcoin. If you are, uh, if you're well versed with these three things, you're good to go. Like there, there is a high chance that you will get through. And choose a project. Uh, you should uh, obviously choose a project before applying. That yeah, this attracts me and. Have a chat with the contributor. People are really supportive in this ecosystem. They'll reply. They'll help you out. Don't shy away from DMing anyone. Awesome. So uh, thank yeah. you so much, Aditya, for sharing about your Summer of Bitcoin experience. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for listening to the Summer of Bitcoin experience. I would love to get your thoughts on what else would you like to hear from these student developers and how to make this the most valuable podcast for getting started with Bitcoin open source development. Write to us at hello at summerofbitcoin.org. Can you do us a small favor? Go online and share this episode with at least one friend who you think would benefit from this episode. Until next time.